Chao. Bienvenidos a otra clase de español. Hoy vamos a hablar de tres verbos nuevos que son irregulares. Y son los verbos ir, dar y estar. Ir, dar y estar, que son tres verbos nuevos, un poco irregulares. ¿Vale? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about three new verbs which are irregular. There are three very common verbs. The verbs are ir, which means to go, dar, which means to give, and estar, which means to be. A couple of things before we look at them closely. Um, estar is a verb that means to be. If you remember, there's another verb that we've, mean, that we've seen that means to be, which is the verb ser. So a brief note on the distinctions between ser and estar, I think is important before we go too far with this. If you remember the verb ser, We'll be looking at this closely in the next chapter. But if you remember that the verb ser, we've used many times so far, and you've already seen many of the different uses of the verb ser. We have seen the verb ser since the beginning of this class. First, to describe inherent characteristics or qualities. Meaning, um, if I want to say, yo soy alto, él es guapo, ella es bonita, nosotros somos inteligentes. These are what we would consider inherent characteristics or qualities. So um, this could be someone being tall, skinny, fat, handsome, pretty, smart, nice. This could be describing the color of a house. The house is red. This could be describing the uh, size of a door, right? Whatever we would consider these inherent characteristics or qualities. Um, Ser we've also seen to discuss approximate age, meaning if someone is young or old, we use ser to describe that. We have also seen ser to describe origin. Uh, for instance, yo soy de Texas, Juan es de <coughs> Madrid, for example. We've seen it to describe people's nationality. Maria es ecuatoriana. Um, Beatriz es eh, guatemalteca, él es español, yo soy americano, etc. We have also seen ser to describe the date. Hoy es el 30 de octubre, for example. We've seen ser to describe time. Son las 3 de la tarde, son las 10 de la noche. Um, so we've really seen a lot of uses of ser, and there are more that we'll look at in the next chapter. Estar is a verb that has um, a number of uses, but the primary uses, the primary uses of estar are two. One is to describe conditions. These are conditions that we may see as uh, the result of a specific action. Uh, they may often appear to be temporary, though not always. Um, they. Uh, they show some possibility or existence of a previous change. So meaning, if I want to say that the soup is hot, I would use estar. If I want to say that I am tired, I would use estar. If I want to say that you are angry, I would use estar. If I want to say that the door is closed, I would use estar. So these are all what we would describe as conditions. So not inherent characteristics like ser, in which we would say, I am a nice guy, or the door is brown, or the house is big, but more conditions in which we're saying, the door is closed, I am angry, that sort of thing. Uh, the other big use of estar is to describe uh, location. So this could be permanent or temporary location. This can be, I am in the classroom, or this can be, London is in England. Uh, this could be, the book is on the table. All of these would use estar. So one way to remember this is to use the little rhyme, how you feel and where you are, always use estar. How you feel and where you are, always use estar. And then I like to add a little addendum to that, which is just, uh, don't be self-obsessed. Meaning, when I say how you feel, that means how you feel or how anyone else feels, but it also means how the door feels, as in the door is closed right now, that is the condition of the door. So how you feel, where you are, always use estar, and don't be self-obsessed. 
So that's a brief look at ser and estar. We're going to be looking at uh, two verbs besides estar today. Again, they're ir, which means to go, and dar, which means to give. Both very, very important verbs. The reason we're looking at these three verbs together is because these three verbs are highly irregular and they are irregular in similar ways. So let's take a look at them. If you look here, we can start with ir. Ir is obviously an IR verb because that's all there is to the verb, is IR. If we were to follow the normal rules of conjugation, we would erase the verb completely because we'd be dropping IR and that would leave us with nothing and we would have a very strange looking verb. So, instead we kind of have this introduction of the letter V. You can think of that, if you like, as just some sort of placeholder because otherwise the verb would be too short. So, notice the highly irregular yo form, boy. After that, the verb operates much as an AR verb would. So notice, the V still, and then an AS ending. Then a V and an A ending. A V and the AMOS ending, V and the AIS ending, and V and the AN ending. Notice that BAIS, as I've underlined here, does not have an accent mark. Normally our vosotros form there would have an accent mark, but because it's only one syllable, the accent would not at all change the pronunciation, and we have no need for an accent mark. So, boy, bas, ba, vamos, bais, ba. Once we've learned that, the others should be easy, because dar, you're going to see, is almost exactly the same. We have, again, this oi ending, so doi. And das, da, damos, dais, and dan. So it's basically exactly the same as ir, except instead of v's, we have d's. So this should not be very hard to remember. Once again, no accent in the vosotros form. We go over to estar, also very similar. So we have estoy, and then estás, está, estamos, estáis, están. One thing I've tried to highlight here is the use of accents. So notice the accents in the tu form, the el form, and the ellos form. Okay? Otherwise, basically the same as these other verbs. So these verbs are irregular, but not all that irregular. If you just kind of get the pattern and you can apply it to all three of them, you'll see that they're not that crazy. And you can also see that even though ir is obviously not an AR verb, they all act very much like an AR verb with some slight differences. Those differences being the yo form in all three of them and the lack of accents in vice and dice in those ones and the placement of accents in estado. Okay, but those are really the only differences from how an AR verb would be translated, uh, conjugated. Okay, so uh, that's basically it for ir, dar, and estar. One uh, thing before I go on, the verb ir it's very, very, very often going to be followed by a. Not always. Okay, I can say, for instance, if you ask me if I'm going to class, I can say, see, sí. boy, yes, I am going. And that would be totally okay to say. Um, however, oftentimes we'll see ir a as in, for instance, boy a clase. I am going to class. So just notice, because ir is talking about going places, we're often going to places, and so ir is very often going to be followed by a. Okay? Buena suerte. Hasta la próxima.